welcome all beautiful souls of God and love of creation. In this video, I wanted to talk about spirituality, meditation, awakening. Meditation, spiritual awakening. That's like keywords on YouTube. Just like so, meditation, spiritual awakening. So another satsang with me. Come here, enjoy the good company of the self in unconditional love, the universal love for all, loving everything and everyone as it is, accepting all happenings as the right happening, every thought as the right thought, every no resistance or judgments whatsoever to all happenings. Every happening is a miracle. So we're getting into the trends of the world. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Spirituality is trending. Yay! Ooh, ooh. Meditation. Ooh, ooh. What is meditation? What is spirituality? What is awakening? So first we say Give thanks to the sacred Soma and we invoke the Holy Mother, Holy Baba, and say thank you. Blessings upon blessings. Because truly, if we're talking about meditation, is what you want to achieve with meditation at least. At least the goal is to remove the things we are not, that are temporary, that we have put over ourselves, over our soul, over our heart. The cloud of illusion or whatever you want to call it, our identity of as a limited little self. And meditation is just to get a peace of mind so we return to our natural state. And our natural state is universal love, unconditional love. And if you just really think about the word, word unconditional, it means no conditions. So do you just, like when it's unconditional, you just instantly get that love, normal love that we have in the world that most people speak about is conditional love. Because it's like, I love you if you do this, I love you if you hang with me, I love you if you have these traits, or I love you if you do like this, I love you if we have similar mindsets. But unconditional love is like a mother's love for a kid when it's born. The kid doesn't need to ask for things. The mother is just giving it out of the pureness of her being. And that is the goal of meditation. And it's not even like a goal that you can reach. It's a goal that you realize your true nature. It's not that you become something. You're merely removing what you're not, the temporary identity you've adapted during this time and space. When in reality, your soul, yourself, your Atma, your Atman, whatever you want to call it, your pure consciousness of your being loves everything and everyone. And in this world, when we're talking about also spiritual awakening, is that everybody is waking up to this truth. And when you see this truth clearly, you see that the only law that ever needs to be followed is the universal law of universal love. And if everyone is aware of this universal unconditional love for all beings, all living beings, you can even say non-living beings, but whatever you understand what I mean, then you see clearly that you don't really need someone to make laws over you. But no matter what, if you wanna, oh, ooh. talk about true awakening, mass awakening, it is everybody waking up to their true nature, where everyone is the son of God. Everyone remembers we're all part of one eternal family, which is an eternal religion. And the eternal religion, you can call Dharma, or whatever. Sat religion, Sat yoga, whatever you want to call it. The eternal religion is unconditional love. The eternal religion is right living, compassionate to all living beings. Do to others what you have done unto yourself. What you give is what you receive. And these simple things, love, truth and simplicity 
It is just sharing your innermost heart. Living from your heart center is meditation. And when you meet all situations, all happenings, all thoughts, all forms, all just all happenings with a deep sense of gratitude, there's nothing that's ever wrong. That's a Osho quote even. When you truly meet life with this excitement and this gratitude to just be alive and be like, what does life have to offer? And you're not clouding it with dualities of the mind of good and bad likes and dislikes. You just go beyond everything that's opposites, that's dualities, that's pairs, that's this and that. And you just go beyond, which is put in your mind, in your heart, and your heart in your mind. Returning to the silence, because the silent witness in your heart, seated in your heart, that God. And that God is the same God in all living creatures. So if you truly want to live a spiritual life and have a awakening, spiritual awakening through meditation, the best meditation you can do in the whole world is to be loving towards everyone. To see God in all beings. To see God and Goddess in everyone's face you see. And worship every human. Worship every life. Be compassionate. Be loving. This is true religion. This is true awakening. This is true meditation. According to this being in this seat right here in this satsang. <laughs> and it doesn't matter... Of course you want to try to be as healthy and eat as close to as source made things and stuff with diet and things like that. But in the big picture, nothing like that actually matters. It's not what goes in that defiles you. It what comes out that defiles you. And that's a quote from the Bible. Unto the pure, all things are pure. And when your attitude is soma, like psychedelics, when your attitude is a blessing, when your attitude is aligned with unconditional love, universal love, eternal love, true religion, then everything is sacred. Everything is pure life force energy. And of course you can use discernment for what is more processed foods and things like that. But your blessing and your attitude transforms poisons to soma. Your touch is the touch of Midas, if you believe it is. When you reach this state of consciousness, everything is meditation. What is not meditation? What's not holy? Where, where is God not? God is omnipresent. And what does omnipresent mean? It means all places. And if God is in all places, what's not holy? What's not meditation? What's not sacred? And in this beautiful satsang, satsang just means it's like a gathering of truth. And technically it just means like good company. That you're, ha If you're having a satsang in your daily life, you can have satsang all the time. That means you are in company that is of people seeking truth or abiding in truth. And that's the best thing you can do to wake up is to put music that is awake that's coming into your perception and put conscious videos conscious memes conscious whatever you take in from your life if you make all those parts instead of like focused on mainstream things you put your attention and almost like your idols becomes people that are have inner peace and have unconditional love for all things and you start putting this in your constant flow of what's being fed into your consciousness. Good music, good information, conscious information, loving, spiritual knowledge, truth, love. If you start putting this into your reality, you will see really quick that the universe, life, is responding to you. It's cause and effect. Karma is not something we're bound by. Karma means doing. Karma means action. And karma yoga is to do actions in the highest good of all, all the time. So to even have the thought 
that you want the best for all living beings. To even have that thought is God. To have that thought is to have the same will as God. If you want the best for all living beings, you wish everybody good, no matter what they do. You have no judgments towards anyone, even if they're the worst person in the world, and you wish them the best. Then you have the same view as God. You have the same view as peace, as source, as shanti. And then if you really take that thought and you really mean it, you wish the best for everyone in this world, then if you do that with all your will and all your truth, like fully, 100% full hearted, then you will see really quick, really, really quick how your reality is just responding to that and you will get blessings on blessings because giving is receiving. And you can look at this in a selfish way too because being selfish is being selfless because you are everyone so what's the difference so when you're really selfish or when you're really selfless you always give you're freely giving you're freely loving and i'm not talking about only giving things like i give this to someone or i give someone money or I give someone food i'm talking about freely giving your love because your love is your being and your being might be right now drinking some water, then I share the water with the person next to me. That's freely giving. And, but it doesn't have to be big things. But when you freely give to life and you don't show any resistance, you become like a yes man almost. You're always giving the best to yourself, wherever you see yourself. <coughs> then blessings on blessings are gonna rain down. And to be meditation, spiritual awakening, which is the mass awakening that's happening. It's nothing complicated, it's simple things. It's be loving, be kind, be compassionate, and don't beat yourself up if you're not. Because every suffering, every mistake, every anger is the Holy Divine Mother teaching you where you're still attached, teaching you where to dissolve that, to bring it up, to bring it back into love, into the heart center, where you have unconditional love for all happenings. And that doesn't mean to force yourself to be an all-loving person all of a sudden. It means to strive for this, to put effort into being that until it's effortless. Because right now, as you're acting, is kind of effortless. Your habitual you is kind of effortless. The way you act, speak and think has become, it's just you. You don't really need to put an effort into doing it. But that's merely because of putting in habitual things before. So if we put in new slowly, we don't need to force away the old. We only need to focus on putting in more love and giving freely. Then you will see your whole life transform. You, you will see everything turn out for the best. Because surrender to love, surrender to God, surrender to the heart, accepting reality truly as it is, no matter what, gives you, it's like giving up all control, gives you control. Because it's a paradox, because all of a sudden you let go of the future, you let go of the past. And you accept reality as it is. That means your mind has nowhere to go, nowhere to be, nothing to run to, nothing to chase, nothing to regret. You just give it all up. Surrender all that control, even if the mind keeps saying it, you just leave it alone. In that surrender, in that leaving your mind alone, you return to silence, you return to your heart. Even if mind is still noisy, silence is noisy, same thing. Pure awareness, awareness is not affected by the noise. Then, everything is bliss. Your home, your whole life will be the beacon of light for this new age that's dawning. 
It's such shit Ananda, Sat is truth, shit is existence, and Ananda is bliss, joy, love, whatever you want to call it. It's all the eternal truth of our union, of our soul with God. And that's eternal religion. Spiritual meditation awakened. <laughs> meditation, spiritual awakening. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to... I don't even want to do anything. I just want to say when you release that control, what I was saying is that you release it. You release your control. And it's like the backwards law that Alan Watts talks about. You do the one thing and the opposite effects happen. So you release all control and all of a sudden you're in the present moment fully. You are the present moment. You're not even in the present moment because that suggests two and you in the moment. Now, all of a sudden, no past, no future, boom, you are the eternal now, you're always here, you will never disappear, there's nowhere to go, there's just this moment right here, and if you grab this moment, you can do breathing, I can do a fucking handstand, I can do a push-up, I can go... I can go paint, paint a painting, I can go write some music, you can play this now it's like an empty flute with infinite possibilities and when you give up all of this time and space control of trying to like compare of who did good and who did bad what your dislikes and your likes are all of this personhood when you let go of all of that and you don't judge anyone or any happening anymore you have unconditional love for all happenings as the right happening then all of a sudden, you motherfucking get the controller. You get the soul controller, the Atma. And that's also in itself. You don't even need to do that. Because all of a sudden, you're in your heart. You're with the omnipresent God. Wherever you go, is a blessing. Blessed if you do, blessed if you don't. There's nowhere you can be that isn't where you're meant to be. But then at the same time, you get this potential. This... When you let go of your mind, your prana just charges up. You feel this bliss coming in your body because all of a sudden there's no scattered energy from your mind reaching out with pranic energy to different places. All of a sudden it's all turned inwards and inside and within. And you get the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is art, it's expression, it's love, it's family, it's joy, it's dancing, it's singing. It's being in nature, watching the flowers, the bees, the flow of life. And you can do a complete surrender. You can surrender to source. You can surrender and just float in the joy of loving all that is, no matter where you are, all the time. You could give all responsibilities to God, to the higher power, and you will be completely fine. But in this same surrender, you will see that giving up control also gives you infinite possibilities of creation in this moment right here and now which is heaven which is there is no of course there's infinite universes and multiverses and happenings that can happen everywhere but this is heaven you are heaven heaven is within you Search for what I'm speaking about. If you don't, if you're not abiding in self and you're joining me with self to self, unconditional love, God bless you, one love. But if you're still searching, if you find the kingdom of God within, which is your heart, when you can fully relax and let go, everything will be added onto you. Every Bible says it, every ancient scripture in Hinduism, Vedanta, whatever, seek first the kingdom of God and all shall be added onto you. And that is because if you want to use some universal law in it, giving is receiving. When you're giving all the time, you're making yourself the best possible outcome all the time. And that doesn't mean give away everything you own. It doesn't mean reach for somewhere with your mind to be a good person. It means stay here. Here. In every happening, you stay here and you do what you feel in your righteous heart center. What is the best? What is the most loving and kind thing to do? 
And once you relax and you meditate until meditation becomes effortless, basically gratitude for all that is, no matter what that happens, then you will just flow to life. You will just have this, all these things I'm speaking about. What I'm saying is you don't practice Dharma and then you get self. You find self and then you act like Dharma. You naturally get these attributes when you find your true self, when you find your true being, when you have self-realization, when you find what you are not. And even that is an illusion to find what you are not. It's only to find what you are not eternally. Because what you are is everything everywhere. If we're talking about pure consciousness. But the easiest thing you can say is God is love. And in love, in love consciousness, there is no two. I'm here, you're here. Forms are here, but there's no one to be jealous of, there's no one to compare. Everyone is equally loved under as one big family, one big heavenly family. And love is all, and all is love. And this, some people call this shit like spiritual bypassing and stuff, but that's just because they haven't fully, they've only read about love and light people on Instagram and stuff, but eternal religion of every self-realized master ever is compassion for all of life is love for all of life is love everybody serve everybody help everybody don't hurt anybody it's eternal religion and it's eternal being it is your soul it doesn't matter if you're sitting here in the Kali Yuga, in the Babylon, in this age 2022, 20, or if you're sitting 10,000 years ago when everybody remembers God, if you remember God, it feels like everyone always remembers. Because the truth is, the permanent truth is that all souls remember all the time. The temporary truth is that some people are putting on a mask and forgetting and playing in a little drama for a while. But if you can look at everybody as Guru, if you can see everybody as Babaji, you can see the face of God in every stone, in every creature, in every person, in every interaction, then trust me. You don't have anything to worry about. Don't worry about a thing. <laughs> Every little thing is gonna be all right. Hakuna Matata. It means no worries for the rest of my days. <laughs> it's our problem free philosophy. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> okay. I don't really have anything more to say. Freely love, open your heart, rip it open. The world is a reflection of yourself. When you stop finding faults with the reflections and you just first maybe find faults with yourself until you find no faults with yourself and then you'll find no faults with the world either. Because it's like looking in the mirror. You're looking in the lake where you see the reflection of yourself and if you poke it, it looks all wavy and distorted and shit, but if you leave it alone, <laughs> it settles and it's heavenly and it's beautiful and it's you and it's us and it's light and every part of life deserves equal love. Everything is love. Love everything. Love everybody. Tell the truth. Do the best you can. And see because if you do the best you can and just be yourself and don't try too hard just relax you will see very quickly what I'm talking about one love hallelujah al akbar om namah shivaya Hare krishna om mani padme hum
Om Sai Baba. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! I love you all. Peace out. <laughs>